down the down the stretch. He really is. He really is because not only has he got the skills, like you say, he's got the he's got the character, and that's been revealed already. Ladies and gentlemen, now we're heading to the super heavyweights. The last final, the men's super heavyweight division, the last bout of this beautiful young men's and women's world boxing championship. Kielce Poland, 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, please into the ring. To the red corner. From Armenia, Hofhanes Papazian. So making his way to the red corner then from Armenia, Hofhanes Papazian. Had quite a strange semi-final in many ways. He was in with Fernando Arzola of Cuba. Arzola had a decent enough first round. Then right at the start of the second, his left eye really came up. It started to close. It wasn't absolutely clear how it had happened. Then he went down from a body shot, which hardly seemed to land. Then he retired with a shoulder injury. He seemed physically just to just to fall apart. But Papazian has to be given some credit for his part in that as he just maneuvers his way through the ropes in very sprightly fashion. A good win against Vassal Tukachuk of Ukraine as well. Well, Zokharov is somebody I've seen all the way through this competition. A former Asian junior champion actually came second in the national elite. So that's the seniors, which is a, a serious achievement. A stoppage against Marlon Hurtado of Colombia early on. Then a showdown with a Kazakh rival, Asian youth champ, Amanat Sabe Gali. He won that one, 4-1. Stopped Ahmet Senol of Turkey in the quarterfinals. Then a good fight against Levante Kis of Bulgaria in the semis. He looks to get that long one-two going. And when he does and he locks on with it, his opponents have got a serious problem. And here are the judges for this final bout, Guatemala, Mongolia, Jordan, Ukraine and Russia. The final bout of what has been an absolutely fantastic 2021 IEBA Youth Men's and Women's World Championships. We thoroughly enjoyed it. And this is one of the fighters I saw really early on. I think I saw him on the very first day. And at that point, I did wonder to myself, will he be making it through to this stage? I would have put a reasonable wager on it at that point. You look at him physically, and he's a big, Big man. Stay back. back. And in fact, not back. quite a man yet, really. So that's the kind of terrifying thing about it. He could get even bigger. Boxing out of the blue corner, Jakongi Zokirov. But Hofanas Papazian of Armenia, he's here for gold as well. Bell goes at the start of the round. And you see that lead hand there of Zokirov just kind of floating around almost. And what he's looking to do is find the range for the one two. He has had difficult passages during this tournament as well. Sabe Gali was a hard fight. Levante Kiss at times was a hard fight too. So he hasn't had everything his own way. Nice little left hand on the on the inside there from Papazian, who's got that that right hand up by his chin, by his jaw, and he's well advised to do that. Tidy little combination there from the Armenian. Goes to the body with the left hand and the right. It's Okiro. The game plan is quite simple. He looks to set those feet quite wide, just creep in with that front foot until he's in range, or he feels he's in range, and then he lets go what is quite a nice loose one too. That's the key to it. He doesn't really load up on it and try and take your head off. He just sends it through. Papazian knows that. That's why he's determined to keep him in the centre of the ring and keep him moving and keep him turning so that he hasn't really got time, as I say, to lock onto that target. Left hand to the body there from Zokirov. Almost at the halfway point of this round. Papazian has done most of the punching so far, you would probably say, in terms of scoring punches, punches that have landed. There hasn't been much on any of them. A jab there just snapped up, found Zokirov, who Again there, as I say, is just always on top of you with that front foot. Caught a couple of left hands on his way in there, the, the Uzbek. He's doing a good job with him here, Papazian, because as I say, he's keeping him turning. So he has to reset, and every now and again, like he did just then, he'll hit him with a jab. 
And once again, that'll cause him just to have to step off. Into the final minute of the round, deep into the final minute of the round. Left hand there from Zakirov. I don't think really landed absolutely clean. Maybe made contact with the inside of the glove there. And the inside of the glove possibly just dragging Papazian across towards that neutral corner. On our left, snapping that jab there, Papazian didn't quite get through with it. Right hand, I think, might have done. So Kirov trying to work him on the ropes there. Good jab. And now you get an idea of the kind of force that he can land with. Now, he's been on the front foot making the fight throughout the course of this three minutes of Kirov. That is undeniable. He hasn't landed a great deal. Papazian has had some nice busy hands and has done some effective work in terms of landing scoring punches. Not totally convinced which way the judges will go with that. Very competitive opening round, and here's the confirmation of the scorecards. All five judges preferring the work of Zakirov after that three minutes. I thought it was really instructive when in the final minute he landed a right jab which completely disrupted the balance of Papa Zian. And if he can get that right hand working, wasn't didn't load up on it by any means, but it landed with such weight now for Papa Zian's point of view, he possesses terrific reflexes. He's happy to invite that pressure and back himself to be quicker on the draw on the counter, but he, like he did there. So again, perhaps a really instructive replay as to how he wants to go about it, but it is a risky strategy against a man who possesses such heavy so artillery out, in his tool bag. I think the discouraging thing about that round for Papa Zian is that I would say that if you're on his coaching staff and if you're him yeah, even, that you thought that round went pretty well, I'd have thought. I'd have thought you that went according to script, but he hasn't won it. He hasn't won it. The judges preferring Zakirov, who was coming forward. And as you say, when he landed that jab, you could see him turn Papazian through 180 degrees almost. He's just got those naturally heavy hands. And I think the reason they're heavy is because he doesn't load up with them. He just, he just lets them go. And at some point, he will find a home for that one-two. Papazian just winging with the left hand there a couple of times, ducking his head almost and just throwing that one a bit wildly. They're looking for the left hook here off, but the weight came just a little bit too far forward and he ended up stumbling after it. Dabbing jab there from Yuzbek. Good bit of work there from Zakirov. Just took the weight back and then responded with uh, a snappy little one too. And the benefit of having that really wide stance is that the front foot crowds your opponent. It makes him feel like you are right on top of him and that you're in range. But as he showed there, Zakirov, Papazian snapped a jab at him and he can just pull that weight all the way back. And being so tall, it means that your opponent doesn't actually actually reach. So it, in a way, it kind of it's a bit of a mirage. You see him pecking with the jab there, Papazian, and he's not going to reach with that. So Kirov, though, is always within range because he's that bit taller. And with that height comes that reach. Still midway through the second round, though. And Papazian has so far successfully avoided catching a long straight left from Zakirov. But there's a good left hand to the body from the Uzbek. It's just difficult to see how Papazian can, can win this fight quite honestly, because I thought he did pretty well in that opening round and the judges went to Kirov's way. I don't have a problem with it, but given that that happened, I'm not sure what else he can really do in terms of his approach to the fight into the final minute. Just fainting with that front foot. Zakirov seeing if he can draw something from Papazian, and he did. Papazian with the weight just a little bit forward there, leaning in a touch. <laughs> Left hand on the inside there from Papazian landed. Time! The gum shield has come out. Just flying out, the, uh, the mouth not closed. Not right shut down, here. keeping that one in, right it's Papazian, so a little bit of a breather for both of them, right, right before here. the end of the round. I'll wash my hands off. Now. 
mouth piece, bite down, okay? Fuck. Referee telling him to bite down to keep that in his mouth. Final 10 seconds of the second round. And a round that in many ways is similar to the first, other than the fact that Zakirov just landed that that little bit more. I agree entirely, and I think what was perhaps different in that second round, in only in a couple of instances, is that Jokirov was able to uncoil his left hand out of that southpaw stance. It was one cross through the middle which really got the attention of Pat Pazayan, and one body shot with a traded body shot. But after Zakirov dipped his knees and really drove it in, well, he possesses the type of power that can make an opponent reticent, I feel, because Papazayan knows what he's got to do. He's got the guns to do it. Remember, in his four wins en route to this final, Papazayan is three wins. He's got two stoppage wins himself. So this contest is not over the line yet, even though he's up 20 points to 18. We always stayed up in this division, can be turned around quickly. But in order to land that type of heavy shot, he's got to put himself in the firing line of the man in blue. That's exactly it. He's got to take real risks here. But this is a world championship final. These don't come along every day. It's easy for us to to sit down here and say that he needs to do that. But I think in his mind, he will be thinking that this is something that he that he wants to do. Take that gamble, a little bit too much water on the face there and just wiped off. He attracted the referee's attention there. Zakirov, as you'll see fighters in, in all codes of boxing do, actually, if they feel that, that there's something they're particularly uncomfortable with. About 20 seconds into round three. Zakirov in the blue there. He's boxing for Uz Uzbekistan. He's two points clear with all five judges. Papazian of Armenia in the red. He's done a decent job so far. He's giving away a lot of size, a lot of weight, one would imagine. He's... A respectable size for a super heavyweight, but then you look at somebody like Zakirov and physically the dimensions are just completely on another planet almost. Left hand to the body. Papazian trying to come back with a left hand to the head. And there's the body punching again there, and that is wounding, that is damaging. You can see it. He just tried to drop the elbows on it immediately there, Papazian, but two or three got through and he took them well to give him credit. There's a jab. Nearly halfway through this third round. Down he goes with a body shot. And that time, he wasn't able to absorb it. And he's in real pain there, you can tell. He's in real pain. He spits out the gum shield. And the referee waves this one over. And what a way to finish a fight. How often do you see a super heavyweight finish a world championship final with a body shot i'll answer it for you not very often but that's the kind of power that he has and papa zian had taken two or three of those not that long before that and i was mightily impressed with how he managed to stand up to it but that was just one too many well, as we mentioned during our chat between rounds two and three, Andy, that this man started to demonstrate his heavy hands. And look at that. Sunk into the pit of the man in red stomach. He collapsed to his knees and he simply couldn't go on. And even though what you say, these are talented boxers, they should be in condition as a world final, the pain of a body shot stays with you. And it has a paralyzing effect. He could still be feeling the effects of that now. Let's so get the official announcement. In the final bout in a men's super heavyweight division win by RSC in the first round and 36 seconds third round the boxer from the blue corner Jakongir Zakirov Uzbekistan Jakongir Zakirov of Uzbekistan gets it Asian junior champion now the world youth champion and it's another stoppage his third in five fights. And he looks like somebody who has got a big future ahead of him. And that was an absolute wound of that left hand.